Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today is the start of my most ambitious project so far, and that is breeding ants. In the past, I've bred Momoko Rubo, so I know that it will work, and I've seen other YouTubers do it. I've also raised multiple colonies into having elates in the past, so I know that once they get elates, I can contain them and breed them successfully. But you may be asking, well, why would you even want to breed ants? Which is fair enough, but I do have an answer for you. See, breeding ants in captivity is something that I've always wanted to do, and I've bred ants from the wild, and then I've also raised colonies to elates, so if I put the two together, then I can raise my own. And then, hopefully, I'll be able to make more and more species, which will mean that I'll be able to sell them to you guys and give them away in giveaways. And when I say make more species, I just mean raise more species. So now it's time to see how I'm gonna do it. So recently, I went to home base to look for some boxes, Originally, I was going to get a massive box, like 100 litres, and then I was going to section it into four, put outworlds in there, and then raise them like that. But when I saw these crystal clear boxes for only like a pound fifty, I had to get them. So that's what I did. Now that I had the container for the ants, I need to add some sand. This is so it can regulate humidity, provide a space for them to live in, and also provide some enrichment. I bought three colonies, so I bought three tubs. I bought Fidoli Pauladula, as they're fairly cheap and easy to raise. They're also granivorous, which means that they eat seeds, so I don't have to worry about feeding them as much. And that will give me a higher chance for success, as I won't have to worry about them dying as much. I got all three of these Fidoli from AnsHQ. I ordered them on the 2nd and they came on the 10th, which isn't that good, but I guess it's just because it was quite cold and the shipping only resumed on the 4th. And yes, there will be a separate video for the unboxing of these girls. But apart from the shipping, everything else is fine, as they came with a bunch of workers and even some lunatics. After I got them, I left them in the dark for about 2 days so they wouldn't be as stressed out. I've also supplied each colony with a spare fresh test tube. So if their water runs out, they'll be good, or if it goes mouldy. Now, one thing that I do have to be really careful of with this species is the fact that they are tiny. And I mean, these are one of the smaller species that you will find. Now, of course, there are always going to be smaller ants than, well, Fidoli. But these are still really small, and I have to worry about them crawling out their setup or squeezing in between the gaps. Another thing I have to be careful of is these guys' majors, as later on in their life, they will get massive workers with giant heads, and although these guys are still going to be small, they're still going to pack a punch. And individually, yes, they're going to be quite weak, but you can imagine three colonies with, well, a considerable amount of workers and majors are going to hurt quite a bit. So keeping them in a secure setup is going to be key to making them breed. But now that I've moved them into the secure setup, well, hopefully secure setup, it's time to feed them. Because if you think about it, these guys have been in the mail for quite a few days now. So they're going to be quite hungry for protein and for some sugar. And hey, if you're enjoying this video and want to see similar content, make sure to go down and subscribe as it's free and only takes a moment of your time. And whilst I'm on this subject, I just want to thank you guys so, so much as in the past month, we've got like 60 subscribers and we're on 450. So we're so close to 500 and subscribing will really help me get there. Well, thank you so much for subscribing and we'll go back to the video. As soon as I unplugged the cotton from all three test tubes, workers from all the colonies came out to investigate. And you may be asking, how are you going to tell which colony is which if they all look the same? So basically what I've done is I've written A, B and C on all the three different lids. Currently, we're looking at colony C, which is the weakest out of the three. I've determined this because, well, they haven't explored as much, they seem to have less workers, and they didn't get as interested by the food. Panning over to the right, we'll see Colony A, which is the strongest colony so far. These guys were immediately out of the test tube, exploring their outworld, and they were the most interested in the food by far. And then at the bottom is Colony B, which is, well, in the middle, as they were kind of interested, but not as much as Colony A, but more than Colony C. Even though they're not as strong as each other, I will be feeding them the same amount, so it will be more even growth and one won't get elates before the other. This means that they hopefully all get elates at the same time and the breeding will be a bit more successful. As I'm recording this, I just gave them some seeds, which is shear seeds and the other ones which are like grass seeds and the big ones. And although they've only been in there for a few days now, they've already started to build with the sand, which is really good. Oh, and hey, one quick question. Do you guys think this camera is doing good at picking up the ants quality, or do you think I need to get an extra macro lens to make it a bit better? Leave your answer in the comments below. Unfortunately, for Dodi Polar do, do hibernate, which means that they won't be growing all year round. But it does mean that the colonies will last a lot longer, as the queens will get their much needed rest. I expect to see elates during the next year or two, 
as my Mesobarbarus and Campanotus macans have both gotten a lates. And speaking about Mesobarbarus, I should be breeding Mesobarbarus as well soon, so I'll be getting a video out on them in the future. And I say in the future, but really I mean in the next week or two, as they were in my original order, but when they arrived, it was only queens, and I ordered them with workers and queens, which is kind of annoying. But it's not Anse Ishiki's fault, as they did send them with workers and a good amount of insulation. It's the UPS's fault, as they just shipped them bad, or well, I don't know what they did, but the workers came disintegrated. Like literally disintegrated. So I will be sending the queens back and getting some replacement colonies. And when I get those colonies, I'll make a video just like this, but for Mesobarbarus. And hopefully it'll be a bit easier as they'll be bigger and I've done this before. I'll also make a DIY outworld tutorial from these home base boxes as they have a really nice seal and are perfectly clear. Here you can see the workers eating and they quite like these mealworms. So over the next few weeks I'll be feeding them two or three times a week with mealworms and fresh sugar. Oh and if you're not already I'd really recommend making your own sugar water as it only takes about 20 minutes to make bottles that will last months and also breeding your own mealworms as it's super easy and can be set up in the matter of like 10 minutes. And if you guys want me to show you how I make my sugar and mealworms tell me in the comments below and I'll do it. And I would really recommend it if you're keeping a lot of colonies as I know food and sugar can be quite expensive for these guys especially if you're buying like wakushi or well some sugar snaps. And I'm not saying either of these are bad, I'm just saying they're quite expensive for what they are, especially the sugar snaps. So the last minute or so of the video will just be macro shots of these guys exploring their outworld and eating food. So if you're going to leave, that's fine. But before you do, can you tell me in the comments below which colony is your favourite, A, B or C? And whilst you're down there, join the Discord for a chance to win a giveaway. And thanks for your time. And of course I'll be putting lids on these guys, as it took me quite a while to cut them out. The lids have a double layered mesh system, so if they get past one, they have to get past the other, which should hopefully secure them and still allow for air to travel through. Thanks so much for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.